So welcome to this tutorial which is going to look at combining traditional keyframe animation with Dynamics. So let's start by setting up a very basic dynamic simulation. I'm going to add a ground plane. I'm going to create a box. I'm going to raise the box up. And then with the box still selected, I'm going to create an RBD object. And what this should do is create a dot network and mean that when I press play, my box falls down and hits the ground. Now, when you're looking at an RBD simulation, in order to change the way the object simulates, you don't set options here on the box uh, in the scene context. There are no options here to affect the simulation. You need to go into the auto dot network let me hit L to lay this out. And you need to look for the node with the same name as the object that you want to affect. And in this case, I have a box object 1 node, which is a RBD object. And then I can set things to do with how the simulation is going to be solved here on these tabs. And for example, I can give the box an angular velocity. So let's play our simulation. And as we can see, the box now rotates as it falls. Although the Dynamics Network may look quite like a SOPS network, in fact it's fundamentally different. And we can see that when we bring up a details view. In a SOP network we would see here data for each of the points on our objects or data to do with our primitives and so on. In a dot network instead you have this very complicated set of data which is arranged in this hierarchical sequence. So we have these containers for data and then further containers and so on until you get down to individual sort of packets of data. In fact, the nodes here in our network are not doing any calculation. Uh, that's unlike a SOP network. All they're doing is adding pieces of data to this data structure here. And we can see that if we move the display flag. At the moment, we can see we've got two containers here, one a box object, one ground plane. If I move the display flag up to the box object, and rewind the simulation so that it recalculates, we can see we now only have the box object data. And that's because these nodes are not being evaluated and so no extra data is being added to the tree. The data in here has really two types of information. It has information about the objects in your scene and it has information about the relationships between them. Let's have a look at this relationship data first. And we can see that we've got relationships that are created by the merge node and relationships that are created by each of the solvers. And if we have a look at the merge node, we can see that it has effectors. So the ground plane and the box object are affecting the ground plane and the box object. In other words, everything is affecting everything else. And the reason for that is that when we merged these two bits of the network together, the one that uh, contains the box and the one that contains the ground plane, this merge node, which is one of the methods for setting up relationships between objects, said that there was a mutual collide relationship. And as we can see here, we've got some uh, a collide bit of data, which tells us that it's a collide relationship, and then we've got our affected and effector groups, and both of our objects are in both. And if we open up these groups, we actually get to see the data connected with the objects which are colliding with each other. Now, in fact, all this is is a reference to this data here, so we could go on expanding this and so on. 
all we're seeing is exactly the same data that's actually stored here. And what about the data contained here inside the containers for our objects? Well, there are two types of data in here as well. If we have a look at the position options, we can see that we've got information about the position and velocity of the object at every and this will evolve at every frame and will be essentially the information that's extracted when we bring our simulation back into the SOPS and uh, render it. But we've also got things here like the physical parameters which are about how Houdini will simulate this object moving and these will tend to be static and not change from frame to frame. You'll have noticed that most of these containers have two parts to them. There's a basic part and an options part. And the basic part is really just about how uh, this bit of data was created, what type of data it is, and so on. You very rarely need to refer to the information in here. It's the options part that contains the information that will be of interest. So, for example, on the physical params, it's the options part that contains the bounce coefficient, the dynamic friction coefficient, and so on. So there's a mix here, as I've said, of things which tell Houdini how to simulate the object, and bits of data which actually record the position and the velocity of the object. Uh, in other words, the dynamic changing properties of the objects bad news is that the data here is almost entirely undocumented. However, it is possible to uh, find out what these various parameters do because, in general, they relate directly to parameters which exist on nodes in your dynamic system. So, for example, here we've got a physical palms container and we've got bounce, dynamic friction, friction and temperature and they happen to be set here on the physical tab of our box object. But if we had a look at the type of this we would see that the data type is physical palms and quite often there are several ways to set data in our tree here. One of them in this case is to use an RBD object node, but there is also a physical parameters node which allows you to set this data directly. And as you can see, we have our bounce friction, dynamic friction, temperature, and so on. We also have our parameters down here which allow us to determine when the data is set. And this brings us on to a second important distinction between SOPS and uh, the Dynamics Network. In SOPS, uh, of course, every node is evaluated at every frame. In a DOPS network, the evaluation of nodes is much more complicated. In general, most nodes have the property here, this operation property, set to set initial. And as you can see, for each of these properties that we might set, we've got a choice of set initial, set always, set never, or use default. And the default is set here. So set initial means that th these particular parameters will be evaluated and added to the data here in this data structure only at the beginning of our simulation. Set always means that these parameters will be re-evaluated and the new values entered here into the same place in the data structure at every single frame. Finally, uh, we get to choose where the data here gets put and by default it will be put into a container with the name which is specified down here and 
usually on this type of node, the default name will correspond to the normal container, so in this case, physical palms. The it is sometimes useful, however, to change this, so I could change this to my physical palms. Now, at the moment, it's not doing anything, it's not adding to this data tree because it's not connected into the network. And to connect it into the network, I can do one of two things. I can feed my uh, object through it, like so. And if I rewind my simulation, I should find that, yes, the container has been created, my physical palms, which has the values that I've set here. And we can see that responding as I change that parameter value. Another way to apply data is to use an apply data node. And this has two connectors, one of which takes your object, and there it is, and the other takes the data. And I can disconnect that and then add it in like so. And we need to disconnect this as well. And this has exactly the same effect. These physical parameter, this physical parameter data will be applied to all of the objects which are passing through this apply data node. So if I had two boxes here, box object one and box object two, we would have identical data applied to each of them and we would see the my physical palms container appear in both of them. But what does having a My Physical Palms container mean? How does it affect our simulation? We've now got two sets of information about bounce and friction, one in My Physical Palms and, and one here in Physical Palms. Well, the answer is that Houdini won't be looking for any information about the simulation in something called My Physical Palms. This is something we've created and added to the data structure it will just be looking for information in the standard default containers that are listed here. And so it's not going to be very useful to set a duplicate set of physical parameters. But it can be useful, as we'll see later on, to, for example, have a duplicate set of position parameters. And let's now look at some of the ways in which you can combine traditional animation with a dynamic simulation. So the first thing I'm going to do is to go back to the object level and I'm actually going to simulate our box, uh, a keyframe our box rather. So let's go to frame one. I'm going to move our box to one side of the screen. I'm going to out left click to keyframe it there and then I'm going to go to frame 50 say and I'm going to move it and don't worry that it's, that it's down at the bottom to the other side of the screen like so. And the reason it's down here is because of course we have a dynamic simulation which has caused the box to fall. So if I now play my animation, the box simply falls onto the ground. And this animation that we have on our box object has no effect. How would I get the dot simulation to start at a particular point, say, so that the box moves across here and then starts to fall? Well, the answer is that I can use a keyframed active node and in fact uh, we can set this up here using our drive simulation tab and we can use deactivate and let's do that now so let's select our box object and let's click deactivate and what we should find is I need to press enter is that we get an extra node added to our network here, which is an RBD keyframe active node. And if we have a look at our details view, we won't notice any extra data because the key thing that this node is doing 
is setting a bit of data that already existed in our tree here, and that was the active value. And it just has a single value, active. And what an active value bit of data tells Houdini is whether or not we should use the solvers to solve the simulation of this object, or whether we should use some other data. Uh, and in this case, uh, because the active value is zero, uh, this object is not going to be solved using the rigid body solver. It's going to be solved using uh, the motion of an object in our scene. In this case, the motion that we added to the box object earlier on. So what we should find is when we rewind the simulation and press play, we now have our animated box. What happens if I want the box to start falling halfway through our simulation? Well, what I can do is animate this active value. And it's important to animate it using a constant animation curve. Uh, so let's do that. I'm going to take this. Let's take it and let's set a keyframe at frame 25 and let's set its value to 1 and this is also now constant so this is just going straight from 0 to 1 at frame 25 so, at frame 25, this will start being simulated using the rigid body solver. So, let's try that. So, we can see animation, and then it falls and goes to the ground. And we can also see that it is clever enough to inherit the velocity that it acquires from the keyframe to give it the correct falling motion.